Hello and welcome to Cupcakes and Crafts. Today I'll be sharing with you how I made these unicorn and golden ball cake pops. To make our cake pops we'll need some cake crumbs. I've used some leftover cupcakes which I've just crumbled. You'll also need two lots of buttercream, one to mix into the cake crumbs and one for decoration at the end. I've also got some lollipop sticks. I prefer to use the paper ones to the plastic. Some white chocolate for melting. I've also got two kinds of gold luster dust. This one's just a finer dust and a paintbrush. I'm also using some assorted piping tip nozzles. They're fairly small, but don't worry if you don't own any piping tips because we can just cut the end off our piping bags. I've also got a rolling pin and some white fondant. These are just going to make the little ears for the unicorns. I've also got an assortment of food colouring. You can use whatever colours you've got. Also a cocktail stick, a knife and a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Next it's time to mix our cake crumbs and buttercream together. I'll leave quantities down below but I tend to weigh the amount of cake crumbs I've got and then half that amount for my buttercream and just keep bringing the mixture together. Now it's time to shape our cake pops. For the unicorns I'm rolling mine into a cylinder just working the mixture between both hands back and forth and just keep going till we've got that cylinder shape. There's also an option of weighing your cake pop mixture before you roll it. I do weigh mine and I weigh mine about 30 grams for each cake pop. I just find it gives me better control over all of my cake pops being the same size. As you can see I'm standing the cylinders up as well on one of the flat sides. And to make the golden balls we're just going to roll the mixture into a normal ball. Once you've got everything rolled out and ready onto your baking tray, we want to place it in the fridge for about 15 minutes just till this mixture becomes quite firm. Whilst this mixture is going hard in the fridge, I'm just going to knead the white fondant and then I'm going to roll it out into a nice long thin line. I am just using normal fondant. You can use sugar paste if you want, but by the time we've finished with our cake pops, these should have firmed up. Then bringing both ends together and just gently twisting, I'm trying to keep it thinner towards one end and thicker towards the base. I'm gently rolling my finger over it to make it smooth and then I'm going to cover it in luster dust. Just take your time while you're making the unicorn's horns and leave them out in the air to firm up. And to make the unicorn's ears, you want to roll out the remaining white fondant and cut away some little triangles and then gently fold in the bottom two corners while just smoothing out the sides and taking the sharp point away from the top just by tapping it with your finger. And again, once we've done with his ears, we're going to leave them out in the air to dry and harden up, ready for decoration at the end. This is an added extra, but once I'd finished all my ears, I took my paintbrush and the gold luster dust and just placed a small amount on the inside of each ear. Pop your fondant to the side to allow it to dry out for a little while while we get on with the rest of his cake pops. Next, we're going to melt as chocolate. I put mine in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time so I don't overheat my chocolate. You want to dip your lollipop stick into the melted white chocolate and support the cake pop in one hand and then gently but firmly push the lollipop stick in about three quarters of the way and then gently rub your finger around the lip of the white chocolate which will just create a neat finish once we've gone in and give our cake pops a full dip. And it's the same process for the golden ball cake pops. 
you want to insert the stick about three quarters of the way down. Once all the cake pops, I've got their own lollipop stick. It's time to pop them back in the fridge for another 15 minutes. After taking your cake pops out of the fridge again, we're going to give them a full dip now. If you find your white chocolate is a little bit thick or drying up very fast, you can add a tablespoon of vegetable oil, give it a good mix together and then that should help keep your white chocolate runny. After your cake pops covered in the melted white chocolate, remove it and gently tap your wrist to remove all excess chocolate. Remember when you are dipping your cake pops into the chocolate to cover all the way up to the seal at the top near the lollipop stick. And then it should look a little something like this. To dip the golden balls in the white chocolate, again it's the same method, cover all the way to the top near the lollipop stick, gently tap your wrist to remove all excess chocolate. Once all your cake pops are covered in the chocolate, it's back into the fridge again to set for a little while. And then I emptied all my white chocolate, what I had remaining, into a piping bag or a food bag, whatever you've got to hand. And pushed it all the way to the front, making sure I had no air trapped inside. Now working only on the golden ball cake pops, you want to just take a small snip at the end of the food bag or the piping bag and go in a backward and forward motion with light pressure on the chocolate whilst twisting the cake pop by the stick. This step is optional, I just felt like it was a good way to use the leftover melted white chocolate and gave it a really good effect when you come to dust it with the gold edible luster dust. Once you've finished with the golden ball cake pops, pop them back into the fridge for the final time. Now, with the buttercream what you've got for decorating, I separated mine into four different bowls and coloured that in four different colours. Popped it all into piping bags using whatever nozzles you've got and if you don't own the nozzles, just simply cut a small corner again of your piping bags and it'll work just as well. Remembering to push your buttercream all the way to the front so you've got no air caught up inside. And while I've got the gold luster dust out, I'm just quickly going to give the golden balls a quick dust over with the golden luster dust and then these ones will be finished. So just quickly working my brush over, dipping it into the gold glitter. On the golden ball cake pops, I've used a pigmented glitter, which is more like a disco glitter. And for the ears, the unicorn horn and the eyes, which I'm doing now, I'm using a finer edible gold glitter and just mixing it with a little bit of alcohol or lemon, whatever you've got available to turn it into a bit of a liquid, just to paint on two arches for their eyes. Now's the part where they really start to come together. Every one of my cake pops was an experiment. I did different swirls, different colour combinations, different patterns. I did whatever I fancied, give myself a little bit of practice. Just do what I thought looked nice for my own personal taste. I tried to imagine the forehead to have a little bit more of a tuft of hair and then the rest to come down into a V at the back. And then when I was happy with using all my different colours, I placed on two ears, one each side, and I found that I preferred them facing out a little bit as to in. And then on with the golden horn. And there you have it. This was the first time I've made the unicorn cake pops. I had a lot of fun making them. It was nice to be able to have a practice and a play around, experiment with different colours and swirls and designs. And of course, it was nice to use the gold glitter luster dust. 
And again, on this unicorn, I'm doing a different colour combination. I've started with orange instead of the pink, and then added the pink. <laughs> And I hope if you ever go making these that you have as much fun as I did too. And thank you very much for watching.